once for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Has God been good to us? Amen. He has God really, really been good to us. Anybody here that knows that God was really, really, really good to us from the rising of the sun until the going down of the sea, He is worthy, worthy, worthy. This be great. Amen. Amen. Today is such a joyous day. Yes. An occasion. An opportunity that we get to fellowship with our family and friends at first new hope. Amen. Amen. I am so glad that this tradition has gone down throughout the many years yes, God. that we've been coming together. Amen. 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 I expect a mighty good time. Amen. But I know I'm going to get a good word. Amen. 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 We're going to ask the choir if they will give us opening selection this Now, a 
upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. Yes. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereby, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid, and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living? among the dead. Yes, yes, yes. He is not here, uh -huh, uh -huh. but is risen. Yes, Lord. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, uh -huh. saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men mm -hmm. and be crucified. And on the third day, Rise again. Rise up. Come on, somebody say amen. It might last for a while, but on the third day, he's going to rise again. Amen. 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 We read in your hearings from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses amen. 1 and verse 7. May the Lord have blessing on the hearers of God's holy word. You may be seated. Amen. And say the Father saying, Within our hearts and minds. Come on over thee. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be your most holy, your most precious, your most everlasting name. Yes. We love you, we praise you, we honor you. Yes. We want to love you with our lives. Yes. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth. Yes, sir. We want to feel your presence all the time yes. and dwell in the thank Holy you. Spirit. Hallelujah. We're so thankful, Lord. Thank you. Lord. Come thank with thankful hearts on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning, on this yes. resurrection day. To the cross and die for us. Yeah. Lord, we're so thankful for that. Yeah. We just want to ask you to please bless Little Mind Road, yeah. First New Hope, and all branches of time. Yeah. May we always be obedient to your word. Use it as a guide in all our decisions. Please bless Pastor Jackson, yeah. Pastor Reed. Preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to our people. Strengthen them and their family. Yes. Move in the thing that will hinder them from bringing us the word. Yes. Because we need to hear it. Yes. We need to read it. We need to live it. Yes. Apply it in our lives. Become a better Christian. Yes. Better witnesses. Be endures of the word and not just hearers only. Yes. We're so thankful for your great commission. Yes. Because you are your whole job. Yes. 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 Thank you for good health and strength. Yes. Good food and shelter. Yes. In a precious breath I take every yes. love and beat of my heart and pain. Yes. Can't do anything. Crazy. Can't do anything without you. Yeah. So thank you for our family, our love. Yes. Our extended family of Christians everywhere. Yes. Strengthen us where we're weak. Yes. Fill us up where we're torn down. Yes. Everything we do in word and deed, please let us do it all in the name of Jesus. Yes. Seeking your kingdom and your righteousness. Yes. Because it says in your word that we will seek your kingdom yes. first. Yes. Everything we need will be added unto you. Yes. And please bless those who do not have an intimate relationship yes. with you. Bless them, Lord. May they come in contact with someone that can direct them to the street yes. of the yes. that leads to your kingdom. Yes. And please bless the poor, the needy, the sick, yes. the shelly, yes. those behind prison bars, yes. those who grieve lost loved ones, those with financial trouble. Yes. May our birds bring us closer to you as we seek God for deliverance. Healing, instruction, yes. solutions to our problems.
in the house. Yeah, man. Amen. I always like to acknowledge their presence by the waving of your hand. We have Reverend Carter with us from First New Hope. Amen. And Reverend White. Glad to have you in this house. I extended the invitation to Reverend Carter earlier, but now to Reverend White as well. If you care to join us, amen. You're more than welcome to come. Thank you. But as Reverend Carter said, she's comfortable. <laughs> I said, I know what you mean. Because <laughs> every time we go somewhere, <laughs> they want us to do something. <laughs> it's good to sit at the feet of John. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And just feast on the word of God. Yeah. So make yourself at home. Wherever you feel comfortable. Yeah. Wherever I am, you're more than welcome to be there also. Amen. 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 Pastor Reed has brought his lovely wife with him. Outside of First New Hope was here Amen. on Easter sunrise morning service. Amen. You see, that's what our traditions do for us. Amen. They get us in the right place Amen. at the right time. Amen. 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 It's good to hold on Amen. to all that we have. But I do want to say, since I have known him. I have known him to be a friend Amen. to me. Amen. I have known him to engage us, to, to see how we are, to measure whether things are going good or not. Amen? Amen. And, and that's a great comfort in this world of competition, struggles, and strife that there is somebody 
will just stop by to see yeah. how we do it. Yes. Come on. Yeah. We're going to ask the choir to give us a selection, and then the voice that you will hear will be that of none other than the pastor of First New Hope, Amen. Pastor Stevenson Reed. Amen.
y'all. Some of you just stood like, well, I'm here. Yeah. But we're talking about somebody that mama couldn't do it. Acknowledgements myself, Pastor, if that's okay. Yes. Yes. You know, I want to sh share with you that the angel of this house has been good to me. Amen. The angel of this house, Pastor Jackson, has been good. And he's been a friend to me. Amen. And Lady Jackson, we thank you for being kind to my wife. Amen. See, we forget sometimes it takes a lady of one church to help a lady of another church. Amen. They're the ladies. We acknowledge first of all our Lord and Savior who yes. is our wheel in the middle of the wheel. Yes. He is the one who has kept us going. We acknowledge all the leadership of this church, all the deacons, the trustees, Amen. all the leadership. Amen. We thank you and I, you're, you're special to me. Because like I said, you, you allowed me to come behind this sacred desk. My first month when I was preaching at First New Hope, it was in March that I was coming and coming, and they asked me to come preach on this service almost six years ago now. And I'm going to tell you, you were very kind to me, so we thank you. Amen. We thank you. On behalf of the, the ministers, the leaders, the, the leadership of First New Hope, we bring you greetings Amen. where God says to us, everybody is somebody in the sight of God. Amen. I would be remiss if I didn't tell the members who are not just sitting here in the choir, but also in the pews. If you would just wave your hand, acknowledge First New Hope. Just a member of the First New Hope. We thank you. Thank you so much. There's a few calls I received that said they wouldn't be here because they were ill, like the Thompson family, Sister Anita, and others. But we love this church. I love this church because they've been good to me. We're still having a honeymoon after five years. They haven't wanted to kick me out yet. So I thank God for that. And none the least, my rider dider, my friend, my commandant chief, she's, she's good most of the time to me in the car. <laughs> most of the time in the car. But there's a couple times when that road gets long. I can't wait to get back to Woodbridge. But Lady Yvonne, we thank her for being with us. And I pray that you came to celebrate Jesus today. I, I want to say there's a special lady out here that I love every time I see her face. It's first of all, my second grandmother, Deacon is where. Yes. She is my wife's grandmother's twin. But I also want to say Virginia Moss. Yes. It's always 
Thompson family. I just heard about a good friend of mine, Brother Roberson, who had bypass surgery just a few this Friday. I'm going to go see him tomorrow night. The Roberson family needs prayer. We all need prayer. So don't forget to pray for somebody while you can. Amen. If you have your Bibles, your tablets, or your phones, I like to turn to a familiar passage of Scripture, but I want to come from a different angle today from Romans, the 8th chapter. I want to read the uh, NIV, the International Version to us. The New International Version. Romans, the 8th chapter. And I want to read the 34th verse. Just one verse of scripture that ties into everything we've been singing about, talking about, and, and, and lifting up. But I want, you to, I want you to hear this version because it puts in the perspective that nobody in this room could do it. Nobody. If you have it, say amen. If you need me to wait, say wait. The 34th verse of that 8th chapter of the book of Romans in the New Testament says to his people, Who then is the one who condemns? There's a question mark. The answer is no one. You may not have that in your Bible. That's why I wanted to read this to you. It says Christ Jesus who died. And then there's a dash and it says, listen to this, more than that, talking about the death, who was raised to life. And there's a dash and it says, it continues is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. So if you didn't get that in your version, listen to the NIV because it continues to show how Jesus is still working for you. He's still doing it. Amen. We, we thank God for the hearers and the doers of his holy word. You may be seated. As I go to God in prayer, as we come to Him during this time. Amen. God, our Father, nobody could have done what you've done for us. Nobody could have went through what you went through for us. Nobody could love us in spite of who we are. But God, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for knowing our frailties that even in our strongest day, we're still weak. God, we thank you for being a God that continues to watch over us. And God, I thank you for you being our intercessor. So we don't forget that you haven't just gave up the ghost and died. Not only did you rise on a third day morning, but God, when you went back to heaven, you're sitting on the right hand telling your father that these are your children. Give them a break. We thank you, God, for those who are in session today in this house. We thank you, for God, for those who are online. And we thank you, God, for those who have an ear to hear. Let them hear what thus say the Lord. Now, God, let me in decrease as you increase in me. Let me fit out, God, and you stand up in me, God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, ushers, for looking so handsome and beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. My brothers and sisters, as we come together on this Resurrection Sunday, as we come, we come with a subject that I think we all can appreciate 
from the reading of the word. Nobody but Jesus. Yeah. Nobody but Jesus. Think about that as I read it to you. Nobody could have done it but Jesus. I'm blessed to have two wonderful associate ministers. I have to tell you that Reverend White has been my, my strength when I needed strength. She's a praying woman. I'm blessed to have Reverend Carter who always gives me a word of comfort when I'm feeling low. And, and I want you to know that it tickled me when I started getting to this sermon, studying for it. Reverend Carter, you came to my mind. See, the words that I said, nobody but Jesus, well, is something she's been saying since I've known her. Amen. She always says, nobody but Jesus. Yes. But what I want you to realize is you don't know what she went through to find out that it was, could not be anybody but Jesus right, right. that delivered her from all she was going through. Yeah. And when you read the book of Romans, brothers and sisters, the 8th chapter, it's written about the doctrine of salvation. Paul was talking to the church in Rome. But today, Paul is talking to Little Lion Road Baptist Church. To be sure that you understand, there are seven chapters before this eight, all pointing to the glory of God and the opportunity to show you how much God truly loves you in spite of who you are. The eighth chapter gives us that opportunity to understand that as God has done things in your life, he didn't do it through you, he did it through Jesus Christ to give you hope in a time of trouble. So salvation did not come free. It came with a price. When you read Romans 8, brothers and sisters, many have dubbed it the miraculous miracles of the Messiah. There have been great things done by the Messiah, but nothing so important that stands above the salvation work of Jesus Christ. Whether it was the withered hand that the man might have had, that he healed. Maybe it was Lazarus being raised from the dead when he called his name. Maybe it was the woman who was stooped down and could not get up. But when Jesus seen her, she was able to straighten up. I tell you, brothers and sisters, there's nothing more important than the salvation doctrine that when Jesus came, he gave us hope. Yes. See, on a hill called Calvary, they stuck him in his side for you. Yes. On a hill called Calvary, they pierced him in his hands for you. Yes. On a hill called Calvary, they nailed him in his feet for you. Yes. And after that, he never said a mumbling word. Yes. But it's in that we see that salvation is free for all, hey. but it's bought with a price. Yes. Paul started these verses off by reflecting on the track record that he had. But I'm stop by to tell you, have you thought about your track record? Have you thought about that, that you might be looking good today, smiling and dressed up, but underneath all that you're still filthy rags, saved by grace? Have you thought about what you did last day, yesterday, or even this morning, realizing that God still forgives us of those sins? See, you can deny it all you want. But aren't you glad that nobody can celebrate to condemn you of your past deeds because of what I just read in that 8th chapter, 34th verse. This morning, brothers and sisters, we can all celebrate the Savior because nobody else could have done it. He's the only sinless one who took all the sins of the world that his father had to turn his back on him. And he had to say, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani. My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? But he forsake him because he had our sin, your sin, my sin, all on him. So on this day, we might wear a nice dress. You might have the nicest suit on. You might have the biggest smile. 
from. But if you don't understand that we celebrate a God who yeah. was resurrected on the third day, yeah. then you have missed the boat. Yeah. Psalm 104 and 5 tells us, Deacon White, enter into thy gates with thanksgiving and into thy courts with praise. Yeah. Be thankful unto him and bless yeah. his holy name. Yeah. For the God that we know is good yeah. and his mercy everlasting and the truth endures for all generations. Today I came because I want to rejoice in the God that saved my life. Yeah. I want to rejoice in the one that looked beyond my fault yeah. and see my needs. Yeah. I want to tell for salvation. Amen. Thank God today for Jesus. Amen. We don't deserve it. No, sir. We didn't earn it. No, sir. But He freely gave it. Yes. In fact, hey. when you look at this chapter, Paul started giving rather questions. He said a question that we know to be true. And he, he gets so happy when you read this text. Hey, first, read it on your own every now and then. He starts answering the questions. Mm. Can I help somebody today? When you look at the 8th verse, the 31st verse is where he starts with this, this question and answer period. He says to us in the 31st, What then shall we say in response to these things? He said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Did, did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. uh, the question to the text was, what then shall we say about all these things? Your clothes, your car, your, your family, all these good things. Yeah. And then he gives you the answer. But if God be for you, who can be against you? <laughs> Paul follows up that 31st verse with the 32nd. Well, another question. He says, Then who did not spare his own son? Yeah. But gave him up for all of us. Oh, yeah. And he said, How will we not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? In other words, Paul is talking now about the intangible blessing that you have on your life. See, tangible are things you see, you touch, you feel. But I thank God.
reading the scripture of just one verse, you'll see that Jesus Christ is still impacting us today. Yes. And you can see three different points just in this one verse yes. that can help you know that we serve our risen Savior. Yes. Look at 34. The A clause. Yes. I'm going to give you clause from, from, from academia text today. Amen. Who is to condemn is the question. The, the, the point is, no one can condemn. It is God yes. who makes it, brothers and sisters, like it never happened. In other words, God wipes clean your slate. He throws it to the east as far as it is from the west. So when we see God looking at us, He's looking at the blood of Jesus which washed away your sins. It's when Paul gets to Romans 34 that Paul states, who can condemn you is the question. And I gave you the answer. There's no one who can condemn you for your past sins. In other words, brothers and sisters, there's nobody with the rights, authority, or ability who can condemn you for your past deeds. And, and Paul lets us know, show enough the truth here, and he says, you got a sin record? But the good news is Jesus Christ paid it all for you and for me. See, you might be a murderer is how I started thinking about this thing. But even in jail, they can be free because they repent. You might be a thief who steals, but even in your stealing, God can set you free. You might be a liar and a cheater, but once you find Jesus, all your sins are forgiven. That's why somebody tells somebody that the Bible says in Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's why we should celebrate this Jesus. You know you didn't deserve it. You know you didn't earn it. You know it was grace and mercy that fell over you. And it kept you and gave you salvation. So your misdeeds, you really did too. The actions that you did, they all took place in your past. And you know that you weren't supposed to have it. But the good news is Jesus went to Calvary to save the wretch like you and me. That's love. That's love. So how can somebody call you out of your sin and not be looking back at the finger pointing at themselves? Paul is letting us know, brothers and sisters, that nobody can condemn you. They can't do it. But let me make it clear today. Folks want to always get in your business. <laughs> and, and they do their best to condemn you by getting into your business and your activity. But God. But God. No one can condemn you. But second thing you see in the text, in the B clause, it's right there. Look at it. It gives us an Easter celebration. It says these words in the NIV. Christ Jesus, now listen to this, is the one who died. All right, you got that? But there's a dash. It says more than that. See, if I had to preach this thing the way I felt, I just preach this thing more than that today. More than that. It gives a comment. It says, who was raised to life. Today is a day that we should celebrate Jesus Christ. Because only Jesus had been raised from the dead. Somebody said Muhammad. I said, oh no, he's still laying there. Somebody said Buddha. I said, oh no, he's still fat, but he's still laying there. But when they called the name of Jesus, they said the stone was rolled away. They said that the grave was empty. And the, and the, and the angel told him, why come for the living among the dead? For he is rose. It's Paul who asked the question here that gives us an Easter celebration when he says Jesus Christ is the one who died, but more than that, that was raised to life. 
see at the point that we are, Resurrection Sunday can start at sunrise service early in the morning. That's all right. It can start at 11 o'clock. That's all right. It can be 6 p.m. And that's all right. Because all I want to know is my God got up with all power in his hand. He didn't get up with some power, but he got up with all power in his hand. You see, it's on this resurrection day, brothers and sisters, because of this day that I can look back at a good Friday that I thought was a bad day. I can look back at a Friday where the enemy thought they had our Savior, where they thought they had shut him down. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, it is finished. And the Sanhedrin thought that he said, he was finished. But that's not what he said. He said, it is finished. And that meant that, that all the salvation that he needed to do was done. That meant everybody he had to minister to, he had already ministered to them. That meant that those he needed to touch, he had already touched. I need you to know that we got to change our perspective and go from when we see a dying man on the cross on a Friday and move to a celebration of him rising up on a Sunday morning. this way on that miraculous day in Ephesians 3 and 20 he says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly about all we can think or imagine according to the power that worketh in us so brothers and sisters I hope you see that nobody can condemn you but secondly you got a reason to celebrate you got a reason if you know this God to celebrate His greatness. Yes, yes. But let me give you a third thing to keep you happy. Because it's not just about the past. It's also your future. Yes. The third thing is in the C clause. It's real clear. Jesus is still working it out. Yes, yes, right. It says here in the text. Who is at the right hand and also interceding for us? Yeah. That means that's, 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 that's working actively, right? Yes. Yes. That means he's, he, he's doing what you don't even know he's doing. Yes. When we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, we, we celebrate sometimes coming morning his death on a Friday. Mm -hmm. But He's no longer in the grave. That's right. He's still working for us. Yeah. The reality of the believers of God is when Jesus rose, he ascended in the book of Acts, the first chapter, back to his father. And he takes his place. He takes his place on the right side at the seat of authority with his father. Sitting in the right hand means that Jesus has affirmed that he is now of equal status with his father within the Godhead. 1 Peter 3 and 22 says, Who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels' authority and power having been subject to him? Jesus is our intercessory and he's sitting and standing in the gap for you and for me. In other words, when mama can't help you, Jesus is helping you. When grandma and granddaddy can't help you, Jesus is still helping you. When wifey and husband can't help you, Jesus is calling on his father saying, this is my son, this is my daughter, give him another chance. And the old preachers would tell you that that same time we look at it, it might have been a depression on a Friday because he died, but the celebration came, you know how they said it, early on a Sunday morning. Yes. So, I stopped by just to give you a word that nobody can condemn me, that Easter 
should be a right that you can celebrate because you know a risen Savior. Yes, yes. But third, I'm happy that even in my sins, he's still my advocate. See, I stop by to tell you that Paul didn't quit writing. He kept on going. And as I get ready to sit down, the 35th says, well, who so separate me from the love of Christ? And he answers these questions when he asks the question. He says, shall it be tribulation? What's your answer? Will there be distress? What's your answer? Will there be persecution? What's your answer? Will there be famine in your life? What's your answer? Is there nakedness in your life? What's your answer? I need somebody to tell me if hell comes in your life. What's your answer? If that dark sword or the gun comes against you, what's your answer? But God said in the 36th, no, for in all these things, you are more than conquerors through him that loves us. See, John 3.16 says it this way, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. See, it was the same Jesus that came through 40 and 2 generations. Same Jesus that lived for 33 long years. Same Jesus who had ministry for three and a half years. But the story said he died on a Friday. The story said that he was whipped all night long. The story said they lied about him, they talked about him, and they called him every name but a child of God. But he never said a mumbling word. He thought about you, he thought about me, and he carried our cross. But they said on a Friday, and he marched up down Gotham Hill.
giving honor to Father God, the leader of our lives. Now is the time and service that everyone can participate. In God's word, the Bible, it states to bring one-tenth of what he has given you to the storehouse. We ask that if you have been moved by the service today, consider making a donation to First to Hope Baptist Church. Please click on the Give button and proceed as directed to make a donation. Have a blessed day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Thank you.